Okay, so finally netconf. And why not you uh, as an MP? Well, the motivation, uh, several motivations. So one is basically as an MP was defined for monitoring. Management, yes, but mainly monitoring. What's going on on devices, traps, if something goes wrong, maybe set here and there parameter but not for real configuration, reconfiguration of devices, downloading a big configuration. So this is why all the companies have their own tools, command line tools uh, to do this. Hmm. Okay, so there was the NetConf working group and they created several RFCs. And uh, those RFCs now they say, okay, NetConf now year 2000 and following 2011, um, well, we have new ways of describing things. And XML is the way, a markup language, extensible, how to describe web pages, HTML, and other things. Now we also have many protocols for secure transport. We know how we encode here with JavaScript a way of... Uh, well, notation for objects, JavaScript, JSON, XML, all new things. They didn't exist at that time. So new things and also now more operations. We still have the get and kind of, yeah, set. But in this, it's just some examples, get can do more so we can retrieve the running configuration of a device and the state of the device or parameters. So we can download part of the data store. We can edit the configuration of the data store on the device. We can replace content, create content, delete, so a lot more. We can copy configuration from one data store to another, uh, lock it, uh, unlock it, etc. So there are more powerful operations in NetConf compared to SNMP. Okay, an example. So could you please get me the running configuration and the device state from a device that runs this, well, NetConf. And this is coded here. This is an RPC, a remote procedure call. And this remote procedure call contains our get command. And then it has to be specified which data store uh, to get. And you also can ask for the running configuration. So that is the, the idea. And then you will get, well, we have to fill in the details. And then this is just the rough idea of the RPC. And then you will get an answer, and the answer is also XML, because today you know, we know how to handle XML. And the first part will give you the running configuration, and that's basically the current operational configuration of the device. It includes settings, just for example, the interface configuration, routing protocols, access control lists, other parameters, so who's allowed to access the device, uh, etc. So when you perform this uh, get in, uh, operation, you can basically download this running uh, configuration. That's one thing. And I also ask for a bit more device state information. And then this contains the details about the device operational state. So like interface status, up down CPU utilization, memory usage, and other real-time stuff. So here we see, okay, 45% memory usage, 12% CPU, just for example. The gigabit ethernet is up, and so on, and so on. That's just an example. So here you see that we get as an uh, well, return uh, says, okay, here this router will give the uh, information about running configuration, router interfaces, etc. So it's a lot more you can ask for. 
And the description is now XML, something we can easily handle. So this is more powerful, more flexible, NetConf. And also the way we describe our, it was the objects, our objects, uh, now we use not our uh, ASN and all this, but Yang. Yang is used for uh, many, many, many purposes, but also for NetConf. Uh, NetConf, also you see the uh, RFCs. This is, uh, can be used description for status of devices, events, or notification, configuration data. Protocol independent, but can be easily converted to XML. So that's what you just saw. So uh, it also represents our data structures, but now as XML tree offering many different data types. So NetConf, that's still use own, well, protocol, so NetConf and uh, including all security, etc. There's also a version that directly uses HTTP, it's called RESTConf, REST interfaces. Ah, you remember we talked about this in the context of HTTP and this allows accessing the data defined in this Yang now using exactly the concepts of NetConf, but via HTTP and not via uh, TLS. So it's also NetConf is secured by TLS. So just an example, we talked about router interfaces. You saw the description, the way of describing something in SNMP, Management Information Base, ASN1. And here you see a Yang example. So we define a Yang module, a module here. This is a Yang module and we call it router interfaces here. And this module, now you see a bit more modern concept, contains this container called router. And inside the router container, now we have a list of interface entries. That's our list of interface entries. And then inside the interface, well, list elements, they have names, they have descriptions, and uh, if the interface is enabled or not. So a bit more modern and this Yang model, this represents the basic interface configuration now here for a router. And then you can extend this with IP addresses and VLANs and routing protocols and whatever. But I bet for most of you, this is more familiar. If you're familiar with more modern ways of describing data, data types, XML, etc. So if we compare SNMP and NetConf, well, still SNMP is the protocol and the architecture to use for network management. NetConf is coming up, but it always takes time deployment. Although this is now also 10, 12 years old, but this takes some time. But there are clear advantages. So NetConf, uh, RESTConf is for more fine granular, more flexible access control. So compared to this uh, in, in SNMP, so basically either nothing, version one and uh, first, uh, version twos, and uh, no encryption of everything, and just basically a locking in, and then you could do everything. And here it's way more flexible. Uh, typically, NetConf runs over SSH, so Secure Shell or TLS, uh, both is possible, and RESTConf HTTPS, so it's fully secured. So security, that is uh, definitely way better when it comes to NetConf. But also, when you look at the structure, NetConf, as it is seen, use as the structured data models, Yang, and it's way clearer if you well work in this context of uh, XML, JSON, it's a standardized way to represent, manipulate device configuration. So uh, compared to also to all this uh, 1.6.3. whatever, this could be a nightmare. So reduced likelihood for misconfigurations. And an SNMP, that's less intuitive. And this hierarchical tree, yes, 
but uh, you have these complex object identifiers and uh, as soon as you try this by hand, okay, misconfiguration, security issues, misunderstanding, human errors. So it's not that easy to handle. So also structure netconf is simpler. Functionality, uh, netconf, restconf, uh, you cannot only retrieve device data, but you can also modify, replace complete configuration. So you, basically you don't need proprietary protocols and tools and functions anymore. Use netconf and you can basically do everything. And the main feature of SNMP is, well, collecting device status. More complex configuration, mm, yeah, it's, that's, that's difficult. This is why we have these proprietary tools. Functionality, netconf also better. Okay, so now you saw, uh, well, enhancements, new protocols, netconf, restconf, and this is what you will see in the future more and more. But overall, okay, now coming to the content of chapter two, I introduced four, there are some other, but four major application layer protocols, DNS, SMTP, HTTP, SNMP. So don't mix SMTP and SNMP. Sounds similar. So what do they have in common? Well, if we abstract a bit, we see that, okay, all of them are simple. Simple, uh, simple methods, operations, commands. And some of two of them have in the name simple message transfer protocol, simple network management protocol. Okay, very simple. All of them started very simple text-based. So no compressed whatever, but ASCII-based commands. Very simple for diagnosis. All of them follow the client-server paradigm. So a client asks something from a server and then transmits something, does something. Yeah, with SNMP, we saw one client, many servers, but typically for HTTP, you have many clients accessing one web server. So very simple. And also they have in common no security in the beginning. So there, there's no protection and DNS. And you remember maybe Moka Petrus saying, well, please don't lie about other domains. Um, so please behave nicely. Okay, this is something they all have in common. Plus they are on top, typically on top of either UDP or TCP. So... Okay, so that's, that's fine. That's what they have in common. Um, is this enough? Well, we saw for DNS, okay, we want to make this a bit more secure. I will come back to this, but yeah, you can uh, use, uh, also for reliability, use TCP and uh, use TLS, make it more secure, or use HTTP for many reasons. Well, talked about this. So some enhancements, SMTP, there's also some security add-ons for authentication, but um, okay, not that much. So just at least between the MTAs, you can uh, protect it and protect the access. We saw uh, that uh, there is some security if we then come to the uh, access protocols and at least some authentication but not that much development, but still it's client server. Also DNS is still a uh, client server. HTTP, yes, it started text-based, but too verbose. This is why we have HTTP2 that compresses a lot. And we also saw uh, TCP that takes too long time. So why not using quick as protocol? And then we have HTTP. P3. This still is all client server. Oh, what happens if we want to push something? HTTP2 uh, push was not successful, but what we can use is web sockets. Okay. What if we want to have peer to peer? Then we go to web 
RTC. And SNMP also started very simple. We added a bit of security version 2 and version 3, but this is still too simple for many purposes, especially configurations. This is why then we have netconf or we go via HTTP. So REST interface, we have the idea of RESTConf. So you see, we all start with this very, very, very simple setting. And history tells us this is a good idea. Although this is not perfect, at least we start. We start simple, text-based, and then we enhance. And uh, this is not because we are too stupid in the beginning. No, this is because of we want to have running code. We want to solve a problem and then continue. And if we start solving first all the possible problems, we never start. This is what history tells us. Okay, so to a more technical view of uh, this chapter. What we saw is that we have this black box, virtual pipe, the internet, and we have our client. In this case here, we have our client and the client now send something somehow, magically, we don't know how, yeah, you know, because you have the bachelor course, but basically over this black box, over to our server sitting here. And there we have a server process, a little process, waiting and listening at a certain port. So we have this data delivery service with insert API, we send something to an IP address with a port and then maybe also some uh, data. So what runs on top of this? We saw we can map names to IP addresses and mail exchanger and many other things. DNS. We can transfer access emails with SMTP and POP IMAP HTTP. We can do all these web server things with HTTP different versions and we saw how we can do remote management of network elements with SNMP. And there are many other more protocols. Okay, so that is the basic setting. What are trends? So first of all, we see the clear trend from fixed users to mobile prosumers. What does it mean? Many years ago, there was already an article about 15 years ago saying the internet is mobile. Because that was the point when more mobile users accessed the internet than fixed users. But the internet protocols were made for fixed big machine and not for mobile users. Also, we have not only fixed consumers, but we have, well, also producers and consumers with a mobile. Think of all the video clips and all these things you uh, generate and send in the internet. Look at what's going on with uh, Snapchat and TikTok and Insta and all these things. That's a different world. That's not the fixed consumer downloading something. So it's more wireless, it's more user generated. So that's really different. We have to take this into account. We have several conflicting trends. So we have peer-to-peer, -peer, but also client server. So WebRTCs, peer-to-peer, -peer, BitTorrent will come back to this. Uh, but we also have huge data centers, the cloud, edge computing, fog computing, all this. Then what about more and more personalization? We talked about cookies and tracking and data. That is the 21st century oil. That's the important thing. Well, it's not really oil because you don't consume it. It's data. You can copy it as many times as you want. So it's not really oil. It's, it's, well, it's just as value as this was in the last century. So on the other hand, we have encryption, the right to forget. So uh, we really have the right to forget things. And then right to forget, just uh, to think of, well, we have blockchain technology. Then try to forget something deep inside the blockchain. <laughs> It's exactly one of the characteristics of a blockchain that you cannot change something in history. So interesting. So interesting things to discuss also for uh, all from on the legal side. So centralized approaches, more and more distributed. 
So why not a single machine can really take a full load? Doesn't work. So well, we can distribute. Extreme distribution would be peer to peer, but the way it goes right now, it's a kind of geographically compact distribution. So we have the data centers, uh, basically we distribute them and then we discuss content delivery networks and all this. So which concepts did you hopefully learn? How to decrease delay and traffic? Well, bring content closer to the user. That means caching. So we saw this for name resolution, for proxies, etc. If we have too much load, spread it on many machines. We saw DNS can do recursive delegation, so you don't have to do this your own. We saw the three-tier architecture for web servers, data centers can do parallel computing, etc. Increase availability, reliability, replicate. So we saw all oh, DNS name servers, telephone book of the internet, one of the most important functions of the internet, replicated. We will talk about content delivery networks in a separate chapter. Okay, so now as a motivation, you know how we can use this virtual pipe, the data delivery. But behind this, how does it work? What is inside this black box? So how are the bits transmitted over cables or radio, wireless, fiber, etc.? How does it look like? When we really have a closer look, I already mentioned Wireshark, so, but if we really look at the different layers, so how does it look like here? Layer zero, the cable, and one, and two, and three, etc. So and how do we find the way through the network? We just assumed, okay, uh, we have the IP address, that's DNS, now send, and somehow, magic, magic, it will arrive here. How does it work? So how do we control um, input output rates at routers and all these things. So now we are back at the general organization of the course. So uh, we have now basically finished this first part of looking to some basics and into DNS and emails, etc. So the interfaces to this black box. So somehow we transmit. And now we start opening this box and look at the mainly IP protocol stack. We will also look at lower layer, bit physics and medium access, but the major part will then cover TCP, IP, newer protocols, all these concepts, etc. Plus we'll have a closer look into the new trends, in the domains like the content delivery networks and a complete different paradigm, information centric networking. Oh, that's completely different. We don't need addresses anymore, but for now, some questions and tasks. So coming back, uh, main motivations. Why NetConf instead of SNMP? What are the problems? So, and if NetConf is so great, why don't we just use NetConf? So, and why do we need some additional things like Yang and RESTConf maybe? Any ideas? Then we looked here at four Application layer protocols, DNS, SMTP, HTTP, SNMP, what do they have in common? And uh, so what are the problems? And uh, why do we have new versions? And what do the new versions have in common? So why, uh, where is the trend going to? And then remember, if we have high load, too high delay, what can we do? How can we increase reliability? If you understood this, you understood the core ideas of the application layer protocols, then providing basically then the interfaces then for the real applications like a web browser, like an email program, etc.